Welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In the last presentation, we showed how to find the profit maximizing level of output and the profit maximizing price for a monopoly using diagrams. In this presentation, we're going to do the maths of monopoly. Our starting point is just to remember that for any business, the profit of that business at a given level of output, QI for that business, is simply the total revenue of the business minus the total cost of the business. So, profit is simply total revenue minus total cost. We want to find the level of quantity, the level of output for the monopoly that maximizes profits, and we can do that by using a bit of calculus. Let's just take the derivative of the profit function with regards to output, and that means that we want to maximize profit, so we want to find the point where that derivative is equal to zero, the top of our profit hill, and that's just simply going to be, well, profit is total revenue minus total cost. So the derivative of profit with regards to quantity is just the derivative of total revenue with regards to quantity minus the derivative of total cost with regards to quantity. So our profit maximizing equation is simply to set quantity so that marginal revenue minus marginal cost is equal to zero. Or, as we usually say it, set quantity so that marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now, when we were dealing with price-taking firms, this was really easy, because for a price-taking firm, well, the marginal revenue is just the price. But unfortunately, that isn't going to hold for a price-setting firm like a monopoly. For a price-setting firm, the marginal revenue will be different to the price. Let's see how. So let's start by reminding ourselves total revenue is simply equal to price times quantity. Marginal revenue, well marginal revenue is the change in total revenue with regards to a change in quantity or the derivative of total revenue with regards to quantity. What's that going to be? Well let's use our chain rule from calculus. The derivative of P times Q is given by P times the derivative of Q with regards to Q. Well, that's easy. Derivative of Q with regards to Q is just 1. So it's given by P times 1 plus Q times the derivative of P with regards to Q. And that's what we've got here. Quantity times the change in price for a change in quantity. Now, when we were considering a firm that was a price taker, remember that firm could sell as much or as little as it liked given the price. So from the firm's perspective, to P to Q, the amount it had to drop the price to sell another unit, well, that was zero. It didn't have to drop the price to sell another unit. So for a price-taking firm, that to P to Q was zero, so the marginal revenue was just the price. But that's going to change when we move from a price-taker to a price-setter. So if we consider a firm that sets a price, like a monopoly, then to sell an extra unit, that firm is going to have to lower the price in order to encourage buyers to buy more of a product. The firm faces a downward sloping demand curve, and that means if it wants to sell more, it has to do so by dropping the price. This means to P to Q, the change in price to sell another unit must be negative. So for a price-setting firm, the second term in our derivative calculation here, the second term in our marginal revenue to P to Q, must be less than zero. Notice what that immediately implies. It means that the marginal revenue for a price-setter, like a monopoly, must be price less something, because this is negative. So it's going to be less than the price. The marginal revenue at any quantity for a monopoly will be less than the price that the monopoly can sell that quantity for in the marketplace. Why is that? Well, because the marginal revenue is going to have these two bits. 
when you sell another unit, well, your revenue goes up by the price. That's the first bit. But to sell another unit, you're going to have to drop the price on all the other units that you could have sold at a higher price, but you can no longer sell at that high price because you want to sell more units. And this is what this second term is capturing. It's saying, how much do you have to drop the price on all the inframarginal units that you would like to sell? So the thought experiment for the monopoly is, I could sell less at a higher price, or I can sell more at a lower price. When I sell more at a lower price, well, I get the price on those extra units, but I'm selling more at a lower price. I could have sold less at a higher price, but I'm giving that up when I want to sell more. So my marginal revenue is the price minus the reduction in inframarginal revenue. So for a monopoly, we just set marginal revenue equals marginal cost to maximize profits, or in other words, we set this term here equal to marginal cost. And that will give us our profit maximizing quantity, and we saw that diagrammatically in the last presentation. Now we've also seen it mathematically. Talk to you next time.